Hi there, Yasmin Robles from Robles Designs, where we create drill-worthy websites and brands for entrepreneurs who are hell-bent on taking over the world. And uh, today I will be chatting with you about the four things that, that you should keep in mind when you are recreating your site. So this means that you've had your site for about a year, uh, maybe two, and you want to relaunch it. And it's some of the things that you might overlook when you are relaunching especially if you're DIYing it. So before we get started, make sure to go to realistdesigns.com. I do have a website planning guide, it's free. Um, I think if you go to my site, it is on the top right corner of my pay, um, of my site. It's a free planning guide where you get um, a bunch of different videos and you basically get a foundation for your site and that way you can either rebrand, refresh, or launch your new site um, from SEO to high level SEO. SEO can get real, real deep, but high level SEO um, and what pages you need to have, all that jazz, e-commerce or service-based. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you have to remember when you are starting to rebuild your site, starting to refresh it, is to think about and test the, the user experience. So my goal for you is to always gather data. If you are thinking about refreshing your site, make sure you go back to your Google Analytics. If you don't have those hooked up, make sure you hook them up, but go back to your Google Analytics and see, and maybe even Search Console, and see what is performing the best. So what pages seem to get the most um, the most people? And is it because you've been marketing them or is it because just naturally people go to that page? What pages do people dwell on? So you not necessarily want to see people come into a page and then leave because yeah, 100 people could come into the page and then leave, but only one person actually read the content or found it useful. So you want to make sure that they are dwelling it's dwell time if you that they are staying on that page for a long time and then see okay is that page a blog post is it a the page about my services is it a, pay, a product page what is it so start gathering all that information and then think about the user experience you want to make sure that with this new site that you're not messing with the user's um, journey if it's a good one. If you've looked at your analytics and you're like this, the people don't even know where they're going. They're going from this page to this page and this page and they're actually not buying anything. And I'm getting tons of people to my site, but they're not purchasing. Let's say you're an e-com site. Then what you wanna do is start mapping out that user journey. And then if you can, if you have the time, just tweak your current site a little bit and see if that test works, see if anything changes. So now when you are going to rebuild your entire site, you say, well, I ran this test for about three months. Uh, I looked at the data, then I ran a test for three months and it looks like there was a, an uptick of people purchasing. So now that I'm building out this brand new fancy site, I'm going to take all this data, all this information and apply it to the new site. So another way that you can also do this is go have somebody go to your current site and just browse around, somebody who has never been on your site and who might be willing to be honest, maybe for a free coffee or something, and have them go through your site and tell you everything, kudos, points, kudos bonus points, if they can record themselves on the screen and like following along in their mouse, maybe they can use like Loom or something where um, they can record their facial expressions <laughs> and record themselves going through the site because then you can say, well, obviously their face looks super confused or frustrated and they can't even add something to cart. So this is great because then you can have those videos and you can say, okay, when they were on pay in this blog post, they didn't even click on X, Y, and Z. So why do we have that there? Or maybe my pop-up comes up too fast and they just everybody that's tested the site just immediately clicks off of it. So you want to make sure that you're testing. And I think honestly, one of the greatest ways is to have to just buy people a coffee, say 15 minutes of your time, go through my site. And the goal is for you to purchase this t-shirt. Can you find a black t-shirt and purchase it? And so they can go through the site and you can record them and see, okay. And then if they can verbally talk about it too, there's a company called, I think it's literally like user testing dot com or something where um, that you can ask them hey anything that you're thinking if you're confused just talk to yourself just record it because it'll give you so much insight as to what the user experience is currently like 
But if you can't do that, just make sure you go into your analytics and see what the user experience is and then start mapping out a new user experience if needed. All right, um, and then when you have that done, rethink your content. So you have some information and you wanna jot down the pages that you currently have. The, if you have lots of blog posts, you wanna jot down in general what the topics are um, and see what is going on with the traffic. Um, what did the, again, going back to the user journey, what the, what is more popular, what is least popular, and start seeing it, and then look at your marketing plan. So you if your marketing is, your goal is to get more people to your email list, but you only mention your email list, let's say, not even in your blog post, let's say you only mention your email list in the footer of your site, well then you're, you have to rethink the way you structured your content um, and what how you can reorganize it. Um, and this could literally, you don't even have to draw anything or create a blueprint, just write down and say, okay, well, I need to push my freebie a little more on my homepage, I need to move it up, um, whatever that may be. And then start, get your tracking together. So make sure that you have, if you don't already, that you have Google Analytics installed. And once you start rebuilding your site, that you ensure that your new site still has Google Analytics installed because sometimes we forget to just shift it over. Um, and you want to make sure that you have that information there. Same thing with Google Search Console. Um, ask your designer to add it in or if you're doing it, um, but you want to make sure that you are getting that information. Numbers are powerful. My business coach, um, she is a big stickler for numbers. Her lean is more towards like, what is your close ratio? What is your, like, how much money you want to make? How much money are you making now? How much do you need to, for me, it's how many people are coming to your site? What is the dwell time? What is the bounce rate? What is what is going on on your site? What are the numbers? How many people are coming? Because you want, that's how you want to make changes to your site. You don't want to just say like, oh, I'm just going to delete this button. No, maybe that button is actually getting people to the correct place that they want to go to. So get your tracking together. Make sure you have everything installed. Uh, make sure that you are um, asking Google to do a recrawl once the site is updated. Check out Google Webmaster Tools. Um, just all that stuff. It's all great stuff. At the very least, Google Analytics and Google Search Console. Um, you want to make sure that you, if your links need adjusting, that they get adjusted. Uh, so this might be. Let's say there were links that were misspelled or with WordPress, not WordPress, Squarespace. Some do-it-yourselfers, um, they create a new page, but they don't actually either name the page or they name rename the page, but not the link. So the link is technically a new page. And I totally did that in the beginning. I didn't realize it. I had to, you know, I apologize for doing that years ago, but um, you want to make sure that you're going in and that you're renaming. Yeah, I mean, if you're quickly building it, leave it alone. But once it's done, you want to go back to the services page slash services. If it's a um, about page slash about. Um, if it's a page that, let's say it's a virtual membership, make sure it's virtual dash membership. Um, you can also think about keywords at this point where if it, it if it's appropriate to add keywords there. Um, so if you're highlighting, let's say, cleaning companies in Columbus, Ohio, obviously it's gonna be whatever your domain name is, .com slash cleaning dash companies dash Columbus dash Ohio. And that will give you some keywords. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're adjusting any funky links that you have from your previous site that you are um, redirecting links. So if you are, if you do say, oh, I misspelled design on one of my links and you want to fix it, but there are, there is traffic coming directly to that page, then you might want to do something like a 301 redirect or um, anything like that where it's going to shift the audience back to the correct page, if that makes any sense. If you're trying to get rid of a page, let's say you're like, I don't actually offer this service anymore. I just need to get rid of it. You could also do a 404, well, you need to, uh, you need a 404 page anyway, but you could make sure that your 404 page is very specific to your goals in marketing. So let's say I accidentally went to your um, blah, 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 dot com slash membership page, but you don't offer a membership or you changed it to virtual membership. And so I get taken to a 404 page because maybe you didn't do a 301 redirect, so I get taken to a 404 page 
wouldn't it be amazing that that 404 page just says whoops i guess the link was wrong but here below are some places where you could go and that's where you could say home page virtual membership um blog post or if you have a blog feed have your email capture form so that you're giving me something to do. You're saying, whoops, we messed up, but here is the next step that you can take in how to get to the place that you were looking to get to. Um, so adjust your links, make sure you have a 404 page that is not just a system regular page, that it is a custom 404 page. And yeah, overall, make sure that you are looking back at your marketing plan. Please have a marketing plan. If not, I have a business coach that will help you get one together. But make sure that your site, as you're launching it, ask yourself, is this going to help my marketing? How does the, the website fit into my marketing plan? And, and what changes could I make to help funnel the people through even faster? That is it for this video. Make sure to, wherever you're listening, whether it's a follow, a link, uh, a follow, a like, subscribe, what else is there? Notification bell, there's so many things. Um, wherever you're at, make sure you give us some love at Robles Designs. And if you have any questions at all, go come check us out at robustdesigns.com. We are in all sorts of places. So follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, da, 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 da. And I will see you in the next video. All right, bye.